selectmen's meeting of Tuesday, October 9th, 2018. Would you all like to rise and join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have some warrants to approve, and I would like to entertain a motion to uh, approve a payroll warrant from 926 dollars for $50, a wire transfer for 10, from 10-1-18 for $3,052.81, an expense warrant for 10 18 for $104,009.56, an expense warrant for 10-9-18 for $31,000. $257.58. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'd like to approve selectmen's meeting from 9-11-18. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And this is to approve uh, minutes from other departments from the Cultural Council from 9-10-18. Yeah, you have that motion. Second. And the EMS monthly report from September 2018. And you have that motion. Okay. Announcements. Uh, I would like to announce that Tyler Rowland, District 8, Senator Ann Goby, will be holding office hours at the Brookfield Town Hall from 2 to 3 p.m. Wednesday, October 17th. And all are welcome. And then I would also like to congratulate paramedic Dan Driscoll for nine years of service to the town of Brookfield. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Madam Chair, may I just throw one additional announcement sure. in there? Mm -hmm. um, this is pothole season, so um, our folks from the highway department would really appreciate if, if folks notice one of the vehicles pulled over with the lights going to try to give them as much space as possible. Uh, I know it's kind of hard on a, yeah. on a two-lane road sometimes, mm -hmm. but if you need to pause and wait for the oncoming traffic to come and then go around, please try to take that extra effort um, just for safety's sake. Oh, and it, while we're doing it, yeah. the crop, a crop walk is being held on Saturday okay. around the common, and so those that are interested can visit Town Hall, and Mike Siri has uh, flyers and mm -hmm. donations and whatnot, but this goes to support the local food pantry. Oh, that's great. Wonderful. Okay. Anything else? That's it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, number one on our, on our agenda is Peter O'Connor with the CI, CIPC procedural matter. Would you like to join us? Very much. First, uh, our committee met today, and we were pleasantly surprised to uh, have a Kathy Laroca, Laraca uh, in attendance, and she will be attending our meetings. Uh, and I think that was uh, very helpful to mm -hmm. us already. Peter, so, could you, so that you're on the camera? Could you sit up here? Join us. <laughs> Thank you. Do we need to repeat that? No. <laughs> uh, the uh, matter uh, we discussed um, at the, the meeting that we held to uh, with the treasurer and the town accountant, Linda, members of the advisory committee and members of the capital planning committee, just to discuss what the procedure would be, what the timeline would be, and so forth. And it, at that time, um, I don't think we reached consensus about a specific timeline, uh, but uh, I indicated that we felt that the Capital Planning Committee would probably be ready to go forward with requests for the five-year capital uh, plan sooner than the Advisory Committee uh, was likely to have its packet ready to go out. So <clears throat> our committee um, finalized our packet today uh, and asked that, um, how to say this, uh, that we're prepared to do all the work, that is the work of getting the packets out and, and so forth uh, to, the, uh, to the department heads and to the chairs and to receive all of the requests back. But we would like the initial email to come from the selectmen and the, the cover memo which we would draft for you, have drafted for you, <laughs> uh, would, would be from the Board of Selectmen uh, to the department heads and committee chairs. That, uh, the idea being that your 
you're in charge of the whole process, but uh, we're, we're the ones doing the work to, to receive uh, the request to uh, help the department heads and committee chairs flesh out their requests with documentation, uh, greater rationale, and so forth. Uh, and then to um, review those and to make recommendations to you. So in this proposal, we imagine as soon as tomorrow, getting the uh, packets out to everybody. Um, and this would involve an email. Uh, we'd need Karen to actually send the email to her master list, but we'd provide the electronic um, files, the four files that you have here in front of you, uh, cover memo, uh, the actual form itself, a sample completed form, thanks to Clarence, uh, um, on a specific capital item, and then copy of the, uh, the capital plan as it was drafted uh, last spring so people could see what they requested previously. So those would be the four items. We would ask people to have those materials back to the capital planning committee in a month's time by uh, November 9th, which is the uh, special town meeting. Not that, I mean, that just happens to be uh, the timing of it, but that's the, that would be a month that people would have to uh, basically update the, their previous submissions. Um, Monica had talked, Treasurer had talked to me, uh, I think it was after your meeting today, and she said how you had wanted her to be in charge of this at first with all the emails coming in. And she said, you know, she really had a lot to do on top of that. And I was just wondering, you know, Karen does have a lot to do. And now with this put on her plate also, I mean, she's in charge of sending this out. And then when all of this comes back, then she's in charge of maybe sending it out to you. Is that how I'm understanding? No, it would come back in writing to the Capital Planning Committee. So all Karen would do would be to uh, do the email out with the files attached and that makes it come from the selectman's office. But After that, everything is done by the Capital Planning Committee. So, I mean, but when she does get answers, say if people have some questions and answers, that, I mean, they will go to you and they won't go to Karen. Yeah, correct. 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 Okay, that's what I was just wanting to make but That's sure. one line that we may want to add into the text is to direct any questions. Yeah. Um, Direct and, questions and have it be to a, you. Just a clickable link within there. You wouldn't mind just sending that out as long as I as long as I don't have to be responsible for any yeah. of the responses. That was my fear mm -hmm. is that yeah. if it goes through a third person, you always risk something being wrong. So speaking of email, was there an issue with the Eve Town email? Because I know somebody complained that mine bounced on Friday. Oh, I don't know. They they I, tried I to know. send something to all three of us either Thursday or Friday, and the email Thursday. Yeah, it was something. Friday. I know I said yeah, one up to Monica this morning that I answered from her from last week and she didn't get it. It came back like into my email again. I, you know, sent it off to her and it came back to me. So I don't understand. Well, look, so did you, okay, I'll have to check with Tom George. We yeah. know, he does know that both myself and Al, we've both been having problems. The emails are going through, but they're not in our sent folder, so we can't check and see what we said. Yeah, that's Which what means you really don't know if anybody received the email. Yeah, well, that's what happened with this one. Okay, so let me check with him again. And he'll work yeah, okay, all right. I'll, I'll send a, an SOS to him. Okay. Whose email was it? Can you tell me? Uh, it was uh, Maureen Marino, okay. or Mariano. Yeah, she doesn't have a town email, so I don't know. It could have been her email that wasn't a town email. Because, I mean, the town email, I've been sending you. Well, it might have spam emails. filtered it, is the only thing yeah. I can think of. Oh, yeah, she yeah, said yeah. it bounced. Oh. So it may have rejected it if it was an outside email or something. So, because the only, the, she sent, I think, four versions of the email, and the only one that went through was one that, because she had copied my Gmail account, and it came through on my Gmail, but not oh. the town email. So I would, uh, that sounds like we have agreement then that, uh, that the initial email would come out from the selectman's office, but uh, subsequent uh, um, communications would be to the capital planning committee. In turn, we would summarize for you uh, what we've received. Um, um, that particularly 
for the next fiscal year? I, I'm presuming that you're primarily going to be focused on one year at a time. So we'd give you a, a summary of what we've received. No recommendations at that point. Uh, then we'd be meeting with the department heads and committee chairs to um, flesh out their proposals and get the documentation. And then at that point, uh, we would uh, make our recommendations both to the advisory committee and to the board of selectmen. Okay, does that sound? Sounds good. Okay. Uh, one uh, question is that uh, we have provided you an initial list of recommendations uh, on the articles that were uh, given to us uh, for the fall town meeting. You understand that's been updated, so we'll update our recommendations. Updated. Okay, because okay, the list is a little different uh, than what we recommended. And uh, the question of the drainage on Rice Corner Road is a new article. Uh, we have some feeling that we can't yet make a recommendation because it's a bit of a moving target. Um, and so I just look for some guidance. Uh, we'll meet again before the fall town meeting. Um, just uh, we can tell Clarence, you seem to be the point person on this. Well, I, I wrote it. Herb's back in, so Herb, this is the Rice Corner Road proposal, the 33000 to fix the road. So just to, F, no, it's more FYI that I've written it. It's capital improvement yeah. has, the, has the document that I drafted for you. So Herb has, or Highway has it. The way it's written now is that the, the town would end up having to pay for it. Okay. But with Kenny sitting in the front row, Kenny walked the site with Don Berthium, Representative Berthium on Saturday. He has reached out to wildlife leadership to see where that stands. So we'll just have to see and play it by ear. I think the importance of having this document in your file is that the residents understand that yes, they've been impacted, but that the town is in fact taking steps to, uh, to uh, resolve the issue. So in terms of our committee seeking some additional documentation, we would go to highway? I, I think so, because it, okay, again, so the draft is there. So we'll, we'll um, I'll send between you Ken, I, w I would say, Peter, between Ken, because Ken's reached out to the representative, and Herb knows what has to get done. So okay. it's kind of like the division of roles. Yeah, Herb knows, Herb knows the cost on what it'll take to get it done, and, and Ken's trying to work on seeing if we can at least get some form of compensation from the state. And those were our questions too, and, is and, how, and, how responsibility is determined. We, and, and we I, have no idea. And actually, with, with your permission, um, I'd, I'd like to tie out with Ken uh, offline of here and see at least when we're having engagements with wildlife over this, if you can try to let me know when you're meeting with them. I don't know if I'll be able to, to, to tie out with you, but. Well. I uh, keep talking to the Indian <coughs> fishing game, and I don't want to talk to us. It's, uh, it gets kind of, that's why we brought Donnie down here. And he asked me what we wanted. We wanted money, right? Manholes, whatever. I says, well, we want them to help pay. You change the state problem. Right. Nothing yet? I, I had went down you know, originally when the first uh, the fishing game came down. And it is, it, it's running off of the state property. So my personal feeling is why should the town have to pay for it? Mm -hmm. If it's coming off of state property, they should be paying for this. And like, I think this culvert or the hole that's under the road has probably been there for over 100 years or better. Right. Well, and that's certainly our question as well, is that the first question is um, who is responsible? Yeah, and it comes, uh, it comes off of state property. And how is it determined? That is, uh, who, who would adjudicate the matter? Do we have to go to town council? Do we have to sue the state? Do we? We may. Uh, yeah. And can we, can we wait for that? Well, I uh, think the importance is that the, this board recognizes the dilemma and have put, a, put forth at least a recommendation of how to fix it if it were to come to the town's expense, though we wish that not to happen. Yeah, I, I, and, and I'm kind of a, go ahead. I, I don't want the town to open up a can of worms, because if you do, everybody in the town of Brookfield between the 38 and 40 miles of road are going to be yeah. asking. 
That's how I, one I feel the same way as you do, her. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's country roads. They don't have any drainage on it. It's been that way for decades. Uh, my feeling is don't open up a can of worms. If it has to go to town council, let, let the lawyers fight it out. Because I think it would be cheaper in the long run. I know because I know the people that it's affecting down there on Rice Corner, they, uh, they're, they're saying it's our fault. It's, ha it's not the town of Brookfield's fault. They, they bought, a, they they, bought, a, yeah, they they bought the house in the hole. Yeah, that's what they, I was just going to say. And they bought the they house knew there was water there. They got two wells just above their house, mm -hmm. shallow wells, yeah. that is full right to the top right now that are constantly running on top of the ground. So how can they totally blame everything on it's the not, town? It's not, I know the town didn't tell them to build right. down there. At so the same time, we'll, uh, we've we'll, recognized yeah. the issue, and, yeah. and we've, I know we have. Yeah. And we've, we've made a, a good faith effort to see what we can do yeah, to resolve. Yeah, we've talked to them. And <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Peter. So we'll proceed tomorrow, then. Okay, Peter. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And our next on the agenda is the town hall trees, and Herb, if you'd like to come up and discuss with them. The uh, two trees that are in front of the town hall, uh, we looked at them today and stuff. One's rotted right through the middle of it. It should be taken down. If we're gonna take that one down, I recommend taking the other one down and replant two new ones there, if you're gonna replant trees. I don't know if Peter O'Connell can give some insight on that or not, who planted the trees, but my understanding that Jimmy Allen planted the trees. That's what I learned. They, and they were planted in memory of somebody. Well, I that I can. That they were some, yeah. Somebody that passed away. Uh, Can you call Carol Plum tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I think you might know too. No, Ron wasn't know. really involved. Yeah. Call Carol. You know, I, I asked a couple of the older people in town that would possibly know. I wanted to make sure I say it the right way. If they knew when they were planning and why, and they didn't know offhand. I'm kind of thinking. I, I, I was at the care and you would talk to me. We had an assessor that had passed away years ago. Yeah. Her name was Leona Holmes. Okay. And I don't know if they were if they were in her yeah. in her memory. Maybe yeah, so I'll see it. Check out but, Carol and see if she remembers because yeah, I know that. Yeah. Peter, do you? No, I think that was before my. That was you oh, don't know anything yeah, about that. Anybody okay. asked Tom? Huh? Anybody asked Tom about that? I thought maybe he was yeah, there's, a while too. There's a, but you know, but Carol was Carol was the administrative assistant. Yeah, yeah. Carol but, was here for a long but time. But you do have one, the one that's closest to the steps coming in. The center of it's rotted right out of it. Oh, so that's the one. That's yeah. The okay. And the other one, I'm going to have to cut back to get away from the sidewalk area and stuff, so it's out of the way. Mm. So and the tree's going to look like. Lot, really lousy when I get done cutting it because okay. we can't. So they both have to come out. Then. It, it hasn't been maintained. If somebody needs to maintain them and stuff, you know, at least every other year or so, it's got to be pruned. You know, they haven't been pruned in a long time. The last ones that pruned it, I think it was uh, somebody from town here that come in and pruned it one time back here about six or eight years ago. And that was the last time it was pruned. So Appleseed has a grant for replacement of trees. Okay. We probably have to have a conversation with them as well because it could be part of what they're doing with those trees to be added to the front. Yeah. That, the, I'm pretty sure these out front are a uh, crab apple tree. I, well, yeah. that's why I'm saying. I think right. it, it was part of the uh, the crab apple. Plant okay. Things. And I think we we made. I just wanted to get this I'll brought up so. to the selectmen as soon as possible and uh, get it taken care of before we have issues out front. I'll, I'll also yeah. reach out. But those will, but these will plant it long before they ever did the apple seed ones. But I'm just wondering yeah. if we couldn't combine you that. Combine activity. them and get two from that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Let's see if it could be or so. yeah. something. So you're going to remove them then. Well, as let's talk about it for a let's, while. Yeah, you yeah, guys discuss it and let me know one way or the other. Okay. All, right. All right, but I still have to cut up, cut that one back away from the sidewalk area where it's hanging in the sidewalk and stuff. All right. All right, we'll get back to you. We'll All right. Discuss. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, while I'm still sitting here, just to let everybody know, I'm going to start trying to take care of some of these dead trees that are out through town. Mm -hmm. 
and the worst batch right now that I have is up on a uh, section of Town Farm Road that's going to be taken care of as soon as possible and we're looking to start that Friday weather permitting. And so with that, if people want the wood, it's sitting there to be taken. I've been I talked to the homeowners over there. So one of the homeowners wants some of the small stuff. They don't want the big stuff. The other one don't want any of it. So but we're just going to load so it up. No, yeah. I'm not. it's going right then and there. We're okay. going to load it up and get okay. rid of it. I don't want to go back and forth to try to remove it. If somebody asks on the road that wants it, it's going to get dumped in their yard just to get rid of it. Because I don't need it down on Herbert Road or anything like that. I know I'm going to end up with some of it down there because people ain't going to want it because they're not going to want to deal with it. So. And it's a lot this year. So wait, how many trees are you going to be taking down? Ish, around. There's over 250 trees in town right now. Right, but on, on, on a Town Farm? Town Farm Road's got like 20, between 20 and 25 trees okay. total. Long Hill Road's got over 50. Allen Road's got 20 something. So. There's a lot of them. Busy time. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is um, open and close a special town meeting with some article discussion. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to open a special town meeting. You have that motion. Second. Any discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have one here. Uh, article four. It came from um, the treasurer, and what it is, it's uh, it's to pay a FY18 bill from KP Law in the amount of $1,816.49, and that was for tax title legal services rendered in June 2018. These bills were missed due to the pending transmission of a new treasurer and the uncertainty of which department was to submit the bill for payment. Okay, so we want to do these one at a time? Or? Yeah, I'm right. So a motion to add? You have a motion to add this one? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And this this will take a nine tenths vote to put that on. All right. Okay, then the next one here is for um, to put on this, to address the uh, rice corner runoff issue. So do we want to put that one on? I think we need to hold off. I would until we, we learn more. Okay, so we'll hold on. Right, it's on the list, or Mike's got something. Well, I'd just like to comment on that. Um, my name is I know we've been going around on that. Uh, Board of Health has visited that site. We're all aware of the issues there. Um, I have a different take on it. I think we as a community have an obligation. The stuff does run across the road, as I understand it. We are looking to get compensated in the near future from uh, mass wildlife. So my suggestion would be put this on, see what kind of progress we've made in the next month or so, yeah, and, and then so. address it at the town meeting. Yeah. Okay, good point. You know, I think it's fair to the residents that do live there. I know there's a buyer beware situation when you get water runoff, but I'd like to see it stay. We can always, you know, we'll get more information on it within the next month, and we could always like yeah, we can pass, pass it. it Thank you. For okay. Good point. Good point. Okay. So we'll we'll add this as number ten. So motion to add. Motion to add. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now this is another one. Um, this came from the Board of Health, and this will be number eleven. This is to see if the town will. Uh, it's about raising two more houses here in town and uh, Mike has the script here you probably have a copy of where he'd like to, to raise them and so the total cost would be nine thousand dollars to do that. So one of the things related to this or do we want a motion first then? Uh, mo motion to add. Motion to add. Second. Um, one of the things surrounding this, and I think it's good that we're continuing to make forward progress, and I totally support this, but, but I had gotten that correspondence, and I believe I forwarded it to Karen some time ago, that there was a, a group of um, concerned citizens that feel that we need to also take a look at, at what we do with these properties, either after they're raised or for the ones that are coming into town possession that are in sufficient condition to warrant 
cleaning them up. Um, four people, and I, I did have a conversation today actually with, with uh, Mike Siri about that we don't really have a, a, a housing authority anymore. It's being run by, uh, by uh, Oxford. Oxford, Oxford. And uh, they really only manage what exists. They don't do any planning around um, creating a, like a community development plan mm -hmm. to ensure that you're at least moving the needle with regards to affordable housing. So um, I definitely support taking these down with the understanding that the one of them that is in uh, currently in town possession would be a buildable lot. We might be able to work out something where what got built on the premises would it would at least be um, fall into the category of affordable housing. You know, not have it be a, a, a giant house on a tiny postage stamp sort of scenario. Um, and they've asked to actually form an ad hoc committee to help come up with a plan regarding either partnering with some of the developers that are working in town or whether it's identifying properties that, that already exist that could get designated as uh, affordable housing. Um, and I, I'd like to at least nominally talk about getting support for, if you want, I can write up a charter for them um, and we could bring it up at a, at a subsequent meeting. Uh, but this is the sort of thing that actually they were concerned with is if we're taking down these houses that at least part of one of the considerations as we look at the reuse of that property is is that potentially use it to start to build the inventory of affordable housing in town. So, I've had a similar pardon me, but I've had a similar conversation, and it really is a, it's a balance that has to be played as to the houses that have been were yeah. taken down and now plan to be taken down right. need to be taken down. Oh, absolutely, and, and, I, and, and so I'm not, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do this. On okay. the flip side, what it did is it brought brought to the front the whole notion of affordable housing. Right. And so, given the the need for affordable housing, because there is an absolute need, um, that this is this, if there's something that's going to come into the town's inventory, we really need to make the, right. a good decision as to but, reuse. Because even even if we did something like one of those two properties that's listed here is we we already own it and it's potentially a buildable lot. I don't know, we reach out to Habitat for Humanity and build Maybe. a little, little house on the property or, or whatever. You know, I mean, I, I'm not saying that's the answer. I'm just saying that there, there may be some opportunities to, to, to do stuff like that. I wanted to ask Mike a question. Mike, yes. on the one that is on South Maple Street, isn't there another um, property on that, on that same land? There is. There is. So it's... However, the difference is the one property the town now owns outright. It has mm -hmm. been taken back for tax title. Yes. We own the property. We're not going to have to do much beyond um, taking it down. Yeah, right. but so that's the good news. It, the other one the is, is uh, got some other is, issues. But the thing is, I mean, is that, would there be room to do something like that, put up a low-income property? I, uh, I don't know. I mean, if you're talking multiple units, I'm not sure. Oh, no, even just one house. I think it might be possible. Even with the other one on the property, does now does the town own the other the other one too? The town does not own the other one. Oh, the town does. To my knowledge. To your knowledge. Okay, They're and now the separate. one here on River Street, if I'm thinking right, is the house that I'm thinking of. That one wouldn't really be a building. That's not a building. No. No, that's on a cliff. It's on a cliff. <laughs> that's the one on the cliff. Oh, yeah. I didn't. Mm -hmm. oh. And um, I discussed. Um, I, I talked to. I think I talked to all of you about this. I know other people were looking at the property on Main Street that abuts Lewis Field. Um, we looked at that property as well, but we determined that that is a fairly solid structure and it had uh, some significant work done to it uh, through the grant program several years ago. What I also discovered uh, after talking to an engineer was that he had designed a plan about eight years ago for that property. And what he said is he has that. He never. Uh, it never got submitted to the town, but beyond that, there's been improvements made more recently, which would might make that property um, actual saleable home. an actual saleable if, home if with a, with a septic it. design that goes along with it. So, I'm uh, working towards getting the uh, existing plan and then submitting it to you and the board of health. And then, as I understand it, we're very close if we haven't already taken that property back mm -hmm. as well. So. Uh, I think that may be something we can get off the books. 
Or it may be something we now, can do. Yeah, uh, that one, I don't know her. With, haven't you gone down there on that one on, on, on what is it, Main Street and boarded up the window? Yeah, I boarded it all up quite a bit, so. But the kids have ripped it down and been in yet. So. Yeah, so I don't even know what condition that's in. I haven't been in there, but I can say that on, on the outward, I, I'd, I'd ask Herb to kind of chime in a bit as far as what you think of the condition of, of that house is as far as, we looked at it and we kind of determined that it was still fairly solid and could. I, I think it's feasible, but the house needs to be cleaned up inside. There's a lot of, it's not garbage, it's just a lot of debris, debris. that they left behind. It just, it needs to be cleaned up and the outside needs to be cleaned up and it's a possibility that we could auction that house off for whatever. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So I feel like we're making progress. And one of my own personal goals is, is to see us do this every year is, you know, yeah. find these houses that are just, and, and land. We also found a property on Town Farm Road that's got abandoned trailers on it. And we're looking towards seeing those removed at some point as well. But I think that's one of the things that we'd like to keep our eyes on on an annual basis. And no, I support this 100% on what you want okay. to do. Good stuff. Uh, it's just a kind of point of, um, procedure, isn't the treasurer responsible for these properties? Wouldn't the treasurer Ultimately. have to be involved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the treasurer. Ultimately. Ultimately. It, it gets turned over from the collector no. to the treasurer. Not, not once the, so for things like tearing down the, the, the houses, no, but for no. a standpoint of disposal of the property, yes. I would think she'd be responsible for the whole pack. No, they weren't the one we had. I don't think the last time when we demolished those, what was it, three properties? Right. No, she wasn't. She didn't have anything to do with that. But is a lien put on the property? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah, we had a, yeah, we had, I remember we had a, a hearing on, we had Attorney Blake come out and we had a hearing on that. Okay. Because would we have to do that for both, of, if one is town? Yeah, not the ones that we own outright. Oh, oh not on, the ones we on own South outright, Maple but Street how about the one on uh, River Street? We, we would use the same approach that we used last time. Yeah, We'd have to have a hearing that. on that. Okay. And a lien would be attached for the cleanup yes. as well. Excellent. All right, Mike, thank you. So are we in favor of putting this on the wall? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was it, I guess, Karen, right? I would have to remove the former number okay. 15 that was the mascot eminent domain for the parcels for highway purposes, the South Pond Road Bridge. Uh, it did give me an email which I followed. It was three of you that the state suggested we wait until the annual town meeting because they're not ready yet. Okay, so you 15, to though, here was the five. It's the former number 15. Oh, the former number yeah. 15. So, so motion to remove uh, yeah. motion, motion to, uh, we want to take this off of the warrant. Yep. I'll second that. Any discussion on this? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's it, I guess. No, well, no, it's the discussion of what our suggestions would be as far okay. as the actions for the different articles. All right. Just a reminder about the capital planning committee's request mm -hmm. to group all the capital articles together and number them uh, adjacent to one another. So the fire truck would, would be grouped with uh, the highway, uh, uh, the, the generator, generator, okay, that the tree work, so forth. Okay, so you'd want to like take them, um, yeah, you'd put them all like together. I mean, I mean, so not all the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we'll move it up. We'll move it up to number 10. Okay. Actually, but I think bad. all you really need to do, wouldn't it just be move the ZEO one out of the middle of all that? Because you got highway, Rice Corner Road Repair, Raise the Homes, yes. okay. yeah. and all that. I mean, that would that be a simpler way to reorder it? Yeah, because those or, or move the, or just move the uh, CEO salary up with the chief salary question. Yeah. Thank you. So, we have Steve, but we have... Yeah, just a quick question of clarification. I'm looking at this and I see number 13. Highway is asking for a transfer of the fleet and says could Pass over if number 11 passes. Yeah, yeah, I didn't change that. You're right. Okay, so that, what is that? Which one should that be referred to? It should say number 13. No, which one is it? Thir the highway, number 14, the highway, transferred a fleet account. 
you could remember you said you could pass over that if the fleet account is funded on an annual basis. I wasn't here. <coughs> okay, oh, yeah. so, right. We were going to have that discussion right, at some right. point. Okay. Did we well, actually, that's next on the list of on the agenda. Mm -hmm. We probably yeah, ought to yes. take it up now. Yeah. So, yeah, because I remember, I think it was Peter that had explained to us on that with the fleet repair replace account. You said that was originally set up to replace things in like the highway department, and we've been using the monies like to buy new cruises and things like that. But you said that wasn't originally what that was set up to do. The original purpose of the fleet repair, rehab and repair, um, was uh, because the, the highway superintendent proposed to buy a used piece of the equipment, mm -hmm. but it would always be contingent on what was available. You couldn't wait for a town meeting mm -hmm. so, uh, to, to be able to then request town meeting approval. So we, pre we, we set up this repair rehab account mostly uh, to allow uh, money to be put into it, subject to the approval of the selectmen, to, uh, to honor the highway superintendent's request to be able to buy a piece of used equipment. By extension, it could also be used to fund an unanticipated emergency repair no, I don't recall that it was ever used for that, but it, in principle, it would be the same thing. Would you mean not an, unnecessary, uh, an emergency repair just for the fire, or I mean just for yeah. the highway? Or could, well, it's a king from highway, or, uh, and, but or could that be to say it might be true for any department. Oh, right? that's what I was going to ask. But it really kind of comes back to you to set up your yeah. parameters for what it is to be used for, but it was definitely not to be used for a new equipment. No vehicles. Uh, that, that was reserved for town meeting approval to, okay. to discuss and vote on individually. And if we can bring forward the next item on the agenda, Madam Chairman, yes. the idea would be that the Board of Selectmen would in fact support Article 13 to in fact fund the fleet repair yes. so that we would move on and, and with advisory and C. C <laughs> Too many letters. Sorry, Peter. CIPC. Um, I'd like to have that conversation now that, in fact, that each of the boards or committees are in, in favor of that activity to get us back on the right track. Uh, we certainly support it. We'll be talking about this on Thursday night. There's Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Certainly, the capital planning committee uh, advocates funding that uh, fleet repair and replacement outright with, with the vote at town meeting, but we do not support the idea of, uh, let's say, the money that's generated uh, from uh, FEMA or sales or anybody directly going in there. It would, that would flow into free cash, uh, okay. and then uh, the decision about how much to fund the fleet repair and replacement every year would be based on what's anticipated for the company. And, and you said we'd take it from stabilization? Um, that's what, who, who decided sure. that? That has no, to come from stabilization, I think, because we can't. Uh, yeah, well, I don't think we're at a point where we filed for this year's free cash, so it would have to come from either stabilization or raise and appropriate. Right. So. But we so had we, discussed, I thought, Karen, when did we discuss about, was that when we had the meeting just with the um, CIP and, and the advisory board? that we, pro we re really wouldn't want to use free cash from this year if we had it? There won't be free cash from this year. That won't be available to spend until the yeah. town yeah. meeting yeah. in June. June, that's yeah. what I thought. So it's, it's either. Yeah. So anything if we need to take it would be either be raised or appropriate or be stabilization. And so what I think we have here is, and again, back to the last meeting was that mm -hmm. we did not want to make a decision without all three of us okay. being here. And what I believe is in yellow on this document are recommendations based on uh, the discussion, based on the discussion okay. last time. Yes. Okay. So that a couple of these are raised appropriate, a couple of stabilization, and one is to borrow. So if we want to take a minute to make sure that we got the, our directions correct, correct, we could go over those several articles to make sure that it makes sense between the three committees. We'll, we'll just point, uh, we, we will uh, advisors meeting this coming Thursday night um, <clears throat> and subsequent Thursdays between now and uh, 
special town meeting, and this is the sort of thing that we'll be taking up. So we'll, we'll be weighing in on this as well. So how, how to fund. Yeah. And again, based yeah. on Carrie's direction, right. I believe that these couple were, yes. again, raising appropriate couple stabilization and definitely right. to and borrow for the trip. And, 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 and I think that the primary thing is let's make certain, since like Steve is saying, that they're not 100% decided on how they want to support or what they want to support yet. And I know that there's, you know, been some discussion about about how we, you know, come up with what our best estimate is for where we would expect the numbers to, to reside from the standpoint of the revenue, the revenues versus our, our current expenses this year. That we just ensure that the articles are written so that if something comes to light as to what's best practice that we can make that adjustment. So let's just make sure that the verbiage says raise appropriate transfer or borrow for everything and we don't like right, kind of back right. ourselves into a corner with the verbiage yeah. somehow as has accidentally yes. happened in the past. It has to say yes. That. So oh, yeah, it has to go. Right. Well it's just it, somehow even though that's been how usual and customary we still manage to sometimes not do it that yeah. quite that way. So I'm just I'm exactly. just bringing it up. Peter. So, uh, this is sort of apropos to the subject Clarence is proposing about funding. Um, our committee had a discussion today uh, uh, relative to the purchase of the used fire engine, which we mm -hmm. had been on record as supporting um, moving ahead with this, you know, uh, uh, recommending approval of it at the fall town meeting with the expectation that the uh, first impact on the budget would not be until fiscal year yes. 2020. Mm -hmm. However, uh, Kathy indicated, Kathy LaRocca indicated that she and Pete were going in for a grant proposal uh, to uh, fund a new fire engine to replace that fire engine, okay? Uh, we don't want to be in the position, our committee felt, of putting something before the town and approving funding, which would then make the grant proposal moot. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Uh, and so, uh, right, and, and we're not really, and we're certainly not in a position to buy a new truck mm -hmm. for sure. That's correct. So, which so is, which, yeah. make, which makes our grant application legit because we're we're not in a situation where we want to spend four hundred fifty five hundred thousand dollars on a new truck. That's right. You know, uh, so we have just so our our recommendation as it stands mm -hmm. after our meeting today was to recommend to have this on the warrant because the, uh, well have it on the warrant but move to pass it over, okay? Uh, with the proviso that it be placed on the annual town meeting warrant, that we don't go any longer than we have to. We're in favor of re replacing the fire engine, but not if we shoot ourselves in the foot uh, and make ourselves ineligible for the grant proposal. So you're saying to keep it on would pass over it? At this point, because Pete Martell, Chief Martell, wants to make an argument that a motion could be worded that would handle this problem. And I don't know how it could be. Yeah. So we, we invited him to our CIPC meeting on October on November 6th, which is prior to the fall town meeting, to let him make his case and to work with whoever to figure out how you could word the motion for such an article. Now, when actually, I, th I suspect I know what he might be thinking. Uh, he told me what he's thinking, but I'm not convinced about it myself personally. But I'm only one person on it. I, I just feel like it, we have to be careful that we're not finessing something, and, and we should be very straightforward. Now, when is it, when is this um, grant due in? The grant is due at the end of this month, uh, with announcement of funding uh, in mid March. In mid March. Okay, oh, um, Carrie had something over here to say. That was my, my question, when was it going to be awarded? Yeah. yeah. I mean, to leave it on and, and fund it doesn't necessarily mean you have to take the loan out. Does mm -hmm. that, is that accurate? I think it is. It makes you ineligible once you fund yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Once, once you, you fund, fund it, it, so I don't know. Once you fund it, then why are you seeking money for yeah. it? it, it so, that's the, that was the quandary we found ourselves I'm in. I'm even kind of wondering if we should leave it on and just pass it over and take it up in uh, June in the annual town meeting if we don't get the funding from the grant. 
the caveat with that is that the bond is due to renew in May. Oh. So um, if we don't include the fire truck in the bond application, then it would have to wait until the next bond cycle. You mean the loan? Or, or, yes. or wind you mean the borrowing for the fire for yeah, the yeah. police station? Or or yeah. wind up or wind up just paying the origination fees in order to do a separate financing right. for it, which is how we. No. So I, I would say some further discussion needs to be held on this before you know whether to keep it on or take okay. it off. Uh, right. uh, we some, got time. Some huh? further we got one more meeting. Yeah, we got another meeting. Okay, and Steve, did you have something to add to this also? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we all done with the. So we'll look to close the one. I'll second that. Oh, uh, and I'll um, call in favor of it. Aye. 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 Good discussion. Ah. Oh, so we covered the fleet repair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did the fleet repair. Okay, now we, and we did the trees already. Yeah. Okay. They have a lot of special reasons yes. that I'm not going to do them all tonight, or maybe because they just put the application online. Mm -hmm. and so we we'll look at them and break them up. Mm -hmm. oh, we have a special town meeting one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have quite a few of these in here. Do we want to do them all tonight? Or do we want to do a few of them? Are any of them time sensitive? No, they're all for No, the close, the, I think the, yeah, 2019. The closest I mean, one in 2019 is, I think, it's the Lions Club. It's 126 now. Do, do we just, I mean, we've never refused any of these. Do we no. just go ahead and, and a single single motion yeah, to approve? Yes, okay. I would like to make a motion to approve all of the special use permits that we have. For fishing. For and fishing, for the fishing And the use of the ponds. And the use of the pond. Right. I'll second that. Okay, and I, um, I read the motion. Those in favor, I guess. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then Beth can I can sign just go get writer's cramp. Go ahead and hand them Or you could even, instead of, you could even stop in the office and sign them, couldn't you? you don't have it'll to give, it'll give you something to do while oh, you are. All right. While we're talking. I can multitask that much. I've had enough paperwork in my life. All right. Next next on the agenda is vote to plot on private roads. And um, have a note here. From uh, Cindy, it said the same as last year. Same as last year. The mm -hmm. Brunel Ave, Chestnut, Draper, and Forest Street. The so section was repaired. Joe Goddard Road, Lakeside Ave, Lane 21 and 24, Latenda Drive, Mel Lane, Oak Ave, and Ward, Ward Street are all set to be private roads to be plowed. Is that all set with you, Herb? Yeah, that's yes, correct. They're all, they're all set. Motion okay. to support the yeah. plowing of private roads. A second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, and this is the next one. This is the winter parking van uh, that goes on every every year. Uh, we want to vote to adopt the winter parking van for 2018-2019 of the uh, winter you have, you have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't know. That's something like you know we do every year. I think maybe that should just be done as a vote. You know, that carries on the books from year to year. Well, and we, but at the same time, if we announce it, we're on the front, we're yeah, on the camera that's and true. we announce it. So I think it's a toss up. We have a cemetery deed here to sign, and uh, oh, we have two. Of them. Yeah, they were two gave me another one for the last minute. Now, do we usually uh, name the names on these? No. Save a lot. Okay, we have uh, okay. the deed number. Okay, it's lot uh, 7, 76A in section A, and the other one is in uh, 69B section D. And I would like a motion to sign these two you have that motion. deeds. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Oh, I've got, I, oh, that's I've got it. It's, it's just a, it's an okay. annou it's an announcement. Is basically what it is. All right. Well, and uh, the next is the status on MVP and Mr. Snyder. So this is a municipal vulnerability uh, grant that the town received. The town received additional monies beyond what other towns had received because we're looking into the water system and notably what we would do or potentially do on the south side of town over the Quaybog as far as the water system. So uh, what, what the uh, group has got, well, uh, Peter had helped us get the grant, and so Peter's now stepping aside because it's not necessarily just about fire and those kinds of things, or EMT or yeah. those kinds of vulnerabilities, but now we're talking water specifically. So Jim is setting up a meeting or at the next October 17th water commissioner mm -hmm. meeting to talk the, uh, the idea of working on or using the grants grant monies to understand what we might do south of town as far as a water system so we're going to talk about that and well, then we've talked about that for many years yep so wow. here's some grant money to figure it all out and that'll allow that and then what we will then then be doing is under cmrpc's leadership november Dece mm -hmm. december time frame we now look to gather additional people that would might have mm -hmm. some interest as far as the, the, well, people, the department heads especially, where there would be needs for vulnerability, again, cutting of trees and those kinds of things, there might be something that we want to focus on as far as the, the future, uh, how we go forward with, the, uh, with maintaining the roads. Uh, might be uh, that there's some roads that we need to worry about. It's a planning grant, so we'd want to definitely have highway involved. We would definitely want to have conservation involved. Um, again, we're talking this special water piece to it. So again, over November, December time frame to get a larger core group together to make sure we don't miss anything as far as planning. And then we would then move forward to, to do, CMPC would then document that for us. Great. So, anyway, good. step in the right direction. Okay, now we have Alva Carey. Are you going to come up and speak on the other or were you here for some other reason? No, that, that was it. Monica has a little note that she got. Uh, where is it? Is it under other? Is it under other? Okay. I have one thing for under other, just to, to communicate a conversation with the Board of Health that we lost Mike. Oh, so, this one? Yeah. Oh, right here. Okay. I'll do this one. Okay, this is from Monica. And I think, Carrie, you're involved in this also, right? Both of you. Yeah, this is a joint, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, it says, after spending some time working in attempts to reconcile July 2018 cash, it became apparent to me that the Treasurer's full cash reconciliation had not been completed for FY18. I spend more time working backwards through FY18 to try and reconcile each month due to the busy nature of my daily operations, as well as projects that I am working on to rectify other issues. Within the department, it has come to my conclusion that this assignment would better be left to an experienced auditor to complete. The treasurer's monthly reconciliations are required under Mass General Law and requested of the town during our full audit plan to begin next month in November 2018. In order to have this work done timely, I am requesting that we hire an outside auditor to complete the work. I have met with George Hunt, CPA and Municipal Auditor, who performs auditing work for many municipalities under William Scanlon, CPA. He has provided me with the assurance that he can complete the cash reconciliations. Additionally, he has offered to sit with me and our town accountant to teach us the procedures in performing a cash, cash reconciliation, including how to work back in time and revise other search and search other past reconciliations. He has quoted me for his services of $65 an hour. He expects to spend between two to five hours on each month's reconciliation for an average estimate expense of $2,340. That's three hours per month at 12 months. I feel that it is, a ne it is necessary for the town to implement 
his help are another seasoned municipal auditor in getting these cash reconciliations prepared for our full audit. I feel it will be also much help to us for Mr. Hunt to show us the way auditors like to see the cash reconciliations. I would appreciate the board's of selectmen support in this request. And this came from Monica Redmond, our treasurer, and from Carrie Polakowski, our town accountant. And from what I understand, um, she told me that you each had money in your budgets to we pay do. for this. Yep. And this actually had to be done before the regular one is being done by um, Tom Scanlon. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good setup. I think Tom. it's a good setup. I don't have any problem with you doing it at all, and I hope. Yes, do you have a question? No, I, I just I have a question. It's not a problem. Yeah. So, um, so it's it, he thinks it'll take approximately three hours to do each month. Mm -hmm. Do you know what kind of timeline he's able to dedicate in order to get the year done? Is it something like he he'll is, come in for like a week and just like sit there and help us do it, or is it going to be like is it going to take like like four months from him? split out enough time to be able to get it done or no nope, he has assured us he is aware of our november time frame mm -hmm. for the full audit with scanlon right and he's assured us that it'll be done b prior to that okay so he works for the same company no okay so this is a, a different separate, um so he's different a separate, he's a separate entity yes, yes. Okay. she used to work with him she yep. said when she was in charlton she told me Oh, okay. So it's somebody that she knows. From she when, knows. Yeah. Got it. She okay. Met so with, she met it's a, with him on Friday. All right. Okay. So yeah. so he's a professional that she worked with in Charlton who helped them keep their books straight. Yes. As right. an external yes. Mm -hmm. auditor. And so this way we have a separate entity because that's what we ran into once previously where where we had an, an auditor auditing their own work. So this will keep us. Ooh segregated correct from a standpoint mm -hmm. yes. and this is also separate from my firm that i had hired so this to get us through fiscal that us, 17. that gets so. us to a totally different set of yeah. eyes yes 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 and yeah. it okay. sets us up for a scale so coming in and like, doing this thing i am yeah. i'm totally i'd like to make a motion that, that we oh, allow have, them to uh, uh, a uh, second or third or whatever exactly. we need to do for that one all yeah. in favor aye excellent okay so you can tell monica i will both you're all set to do Hire him whenever you want. Get him okay. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. We're on target. Yep. Okay. The next is the Charter Latino View Increase. Let me bring up one quick thing. Oh, one thing? Other. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. I know this is my second one thing. But um, I also talked to Mike about um, uh, the sound meters. So problem is we've been playing telephone about what the state regulation and what the state requirement is okay bottom line is the way the state regulation is written for the purposes of, of doing monitoring and enforcement mm -hmm. the meters that were purchased are this certified traceable type 1 meters that meet the requirement of the state law the the challenge that we had originally when they were purchased was mm -hmm. that the state would loan us one and then take it back, loan us one and then take yeah. it back. Now it has been in our possession for like three months, but the state's meter is very hard to read and it's very user surly, uh, basically. It's it's very hard to um, get a clear reading mm -hmm. because it's, it's an analog meter and the needle bounces yeah. all over the place. These are digital meters, they're calibrated to the same requirement. Right now they're calibrated to the same year and date what's what would probably be best is for us to get them on a six month cycle where we alternate every six months recalibrating mm -hmm. the ones that we have um and i have written up a procedure that i'm going to forward to the board of health related to i created a form for for to be filled out anytime sound monitor is going on uh, and it has a little block of instruction and there's like a training sheet to to indicate that mm -hmm. the person understands what the requirements are so um, I'm going to provide all of that to the Board of Health via email, um, and they're going to have a discussion internally about about utilization of them, storage of them, and, and that sort of thing. So, so that's what's going on with that. But there was some miscommunication that it had to be the state meter if we were doing any form of enforcement. Mm -hmm. That's not accurate. It just has to meet the state requirements. So, one more thing. There you, you go. I'm done. You're done. Okay. We have a couple things here on a correspondence. Okay. Uh, they said, as for the Latino stations, I guess as of the November 1st bill, uh, 
the viewing is going up from $7.99 to $8.99. And if they have any, anybody has any questions on this, they can uh, talk to Melinda Kinney at 207-253-2217, or her email is melinda.kinney at charter.net. One. The second one, I did talk to Brenda, and she's considering volunteering for that. Okay. Brenda McElder. I mean, Parish. Parish. Brenda yeah. Parrish. Yeah. If, yeah. If this is on the, uh, the elder bus. From the elder bus. Yeah. Elder bus. Yeah. And, Excellent. And if, if she doesn't want it, there's one person in town that just recently retired that I can try to prevail upon. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So if Brenda's willing to do it because she's involved with the town, that's great. If she's not, then let me know and I'll... I think her mother takes the elder bus. That's why she wants to have some input. Yeah, that's input. good. Okay. Perfect. So she's a vested party. That's, yeah. that's good. So do we have anything else on the agenda? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Say it's 733. So I'm not I know you're on public access, but I'm going to talk to you through anyway. I don't care. No.